Off now, so well, welcome everybody. As you know, <coughs> Kenneth Saylor, Kenneth Saylor Roberts now. But yes. Thanks to you. <laughs> but one of the bravest people I know. Yeah. Here yeah. Our, yeah. he's going to get this talk now, uh, and then I'll do questions as well. And short questions, <laughs> minimal answers. You know, those kind. Of, those are my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, let's welcome him. So, I want to start with why, or what I thought about doing the performance before I get in to the show, even though the show inspired the performance, but I think it's just better that way. Um, when I thought about doing the performance, I wanted to do something that made me vulnerable and uncomfortable, and because uh, I can accept that in myself, it just, it's hard. Um, you know, showing parts about yourself that, you know, people don't see uh, physically, emotionally, however that may be. But, um, <clears throat> like, sitting here, tonight I thought it was gonna be, you know, this is gonna be this scary thing, and it would create all these things, and it didn't. It was, um, it was one of the most purest moments of my mind that I've ever had. So I'm having a lot of trouble with words right now because of that. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought that it was going to be this thing about um, really more about me. And it, and it was like this sort of selfish thought when I thought about doing it originally. Um, and then it while sitting there, I could, I could feel the energy in the room shift. And I felt people, I couldn't tell who the people were necessarily around me, um, but I could feel them. And I could feel what they were giving out and what they were taking in. And that's like the purest joy that I've ever had in my life was tonight because of all of you being here for that, and those of you who weren't, well, you're here now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, uh, I, I think I broke out into tears like eight times, sitting there uh, from thoughts of, um, if you had read, um, gotten a chance to read one of the stories uh, that I wrote that sort of welcomes you into writing about yourself, um, I write about, uh, uh, being molested as a child, uh, and then from all, all of that took a lot out of me, and I took on a lot of responsibility and a lot of pain and ideas of the world and how that's, those are projected on me from that when I, I shouldn't have. And I think we all do that. We go through life and something happens and it's to us, but somehow now it's our fault. We are the creator of our own problem that is not ours. This is something put on us. So my point tonight is to um, welcome those things. You know, uh, there's a lot of power that people hold over us in our lives through actions or inactions. Um, through looks, through words, um, whatever it may be. But we have to embrace all those things and accept them and then know where they stand in our life and what we can do with that. So there's that. <laughs> um, for my work, typically if you if you followed my work over the last couple of years, I've done predominantly scribble, Art. So I do like scribble figures. I've done 
um, several abstracts before, but they're very small. And um, tonight, uh, and with this body of work, um, it was more about the the personality of the relationship between color. Uh, I'm a very I, I like color. I'm attracted to color, uh, and I like that brightness and richness in life. So I like to put that with my uh, painting choices. And then the scribbling technique uh, is just with a ballpoint pen, circle, 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 um, on and on it goes. But it's it's like my therapy. Uh, it's like when you want to feel safe and you don't know how to. So you just sit there and you breathe or you, or you like rock back and forth or uh, you'll sing a song or hum something and, it, and you don't know what that is. That's sort of what my technique for my scribbles came from. It's a, it, it's a way for me to be involved in my own self-healing while creating something beautiful, which is not the point of it. We do all this work um, and then eventually there's something beautiful that comes out of it, no matter how ugly the process may be, no matter how long or stressful or whatever it may be, there's still this beautiful outcome, whether we see it today, we see it tomorrow, we see it in 10 years, or we don't ever see it, but it's still there. Um, and then we just need to embrace ourselves, accept ourselves for everything that's ugly, everything that's great, um, things that we like to neglect about ourselves. Uh, we have to accept it and really stand toe to toe with it and then we'll understand more so who we are and then we can make a better impact in our lives, we can make a better impact in other people's lives, we can make a better impact in the community and the world and it's just, it's built off of knowing who you are and what makes you who you are, which is why my show is titled As Some. So. Now I will take questions. <laughs> yes. Hi. I may not answer all of them, just let me know. <laughs> In advance. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, um... So first for the, like, covering for my eyes with the blindfold, uh, my lovely and wonderful friend Carrie, the greatest friend, Aww. made me this beautiful blindfold. Um, and uh, I wanted, uh... Vaguely to be able to, I wanted to be able to recognize the room, but I didn't want to be able to recognize people. Uh, it's, I thought that people would feel, originally I was going to not have anything over my eyes, um, but then I thought, well, that might get a little weird. You know, like you're really feeling whatever it may be, um, and now you're going to go right on someone in this like intimate space. To have me almost staring at you, I think would have, it would have made people hold back more. Um, so, but I could see objects and I could see um, color and uh, that's about it. Um, Caveat being, you can't see your best glasses. There's also that. <laughs> Maybe that had more to do with it than the blindfold did. Okay, whatever. Um, and, there was a lot of people who would tap and then touch me and like the moment I felt their hand, I didn't recognize obviously who it was, but I, it, it was a familiar sense, which is how I know that by doing this, like it, we're, we're all the same. We have, we have our own different things and whatever we, this person may do this, this person may do that or not do that. But through that, like, I, I really felt that sense of community and connectedness with 
everyone, strangers or friends or whatever they may have been. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was a little, it was a little um, bizarre at first, but uh, it, it it soon became like when you when you don't see a friend for a really long time and you finally hug for the first time and however long, like that's kind of what it felt like when I felt someone writing on me today. Is that? <laughs> okay, well, yes. No, I, then that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that there was going to be like this more logical thought about it and this more, you know, just very plain response to it. But it, it as the night went on, it morphed into something. At first, I, I, I was I was uncomfortable. Like, I'm like, I don't know who you are, what you're doing, what you're saying. Um, you could be saying, you stupid fool or something. I have no idea what you're writing. Um, but, uh... Yeah, it just it just it just felt right. It felt connected, it, and it felt like we were together, whoever <coughs> it was. So, <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This was uh, I was kind of impressed. A very powerful piece. Are you planning on doing it again? Um, I, I this performance piece tonight uh, is where I think I'm at at my art stage now in my career. Uh, my plan is to sort of move more into the performance-based work with um, 2D or 3D work um, helping encapsulate that idea. So sort of like today I have all my painting and stuff now. What do you think your experience would be, let's say if you were in the middle of the Portland Art Museum doing this? Yes. With complete strangers. Um, rather than a bunch of people um, you, you know, I, I can't say. I'm, I'm not sure what. Would you want to do that? I would totally do it. I'd be, I'm willing to make myself as uncomfortable as people need to feel to know that we can all be together. Like, I don't know, like, I know that sounds really cheesy and kind of silly, but, uh, yeah, I think that that would be, yeah, I could do, I could do this anywhere still uncomfortably, but I'd still be wrong. <laughs> but yes. That would be impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Robert. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just curious, and you don't have to answer what you plan to do. Do you have a thought about what, how you will either remove the words or let them leave? Or do you have a thought about that? We, again, you don't have to share what that is. You know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure right now. Um, I thought that I had so many plans going into this talk performance tonight. I thought that, uh, you know, I had it all under control. And then <laughs> as life goes, I didn't. So um, I'm just going to just enjoy the moment now. And then hopefully it'll lead me somewhere. So, well, it will lead me somewhere because I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Not yet. Yes. figure yet there's really there's this connection it's really interesting because you have all these <coughs> vertical lines but then I can also sense and you know like an under base that's going like this so there's there's a connection and it's just <coughs> I just it's like I want to know what their relationship is what the conversation this piece is. Yes. specifically the uh, so is. the the title of this piece is are you gonna leave me and I, I'm, it's really a, about a connection that um, is either leaving or it's a connection that's about to be made. So I think it's either the demise of something or the spark of something new. 
which is where I want to go with this, where this figure is looking outward to you or uh, they're looking behind. Mm -hmm. And then this other figure is staring off in the distance at you and you just really don't know which way that person's gonna go, as is the figure, you don't really know. So for me, that's what this piece specifically was about. So. Thank you. Is that it? Okay, how about that gold one there? Uh -huh. That's my absolute favorite. For sure. <clears throat> What's the goo that you put on there? The, gold? <laughs> the like the bubbly. The bubbly. That's actually um, rubbing alcohol um, on the clay board torched. Oh, mm -hmm. ah. Careful. Oh, no. <laughs> I was never mm -hmm. to do that. It was uh, ninety-seven fire. Oh, okay. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it was uh, it was interesting. It was the first time I ever really did it. Uh, this is like a gold deposit. It turned out really cool. Yeah, there's um there's gold leaf on <laughs> it. Um, there's uh, gold and copper uh, metallic paints on it and uh, with dozens of layers on it to sort of bring out that and then there's teal which happens to be teal and turquoise my favorite colors you have not picked that up <laughs> anywhere tonight definitely is so uh, but yeah I uh, it's not my color palette at all I want to do something that was uh, more about process than more about imagery so that's my favorite. Yeah. Well, thanks. Just saying. Thank you. <laughs> Sixty-four thousand plus scribbles or circles somewhere in there. Yes. Um, I I don't have a question. I just want to make a, a statement. You know, having read your background uh, piece when I came in, it just kind of blew my mind. But reading that and then watching the performance. I, I got to honestly say, I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I, I, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I, putting myself in that position, um, you know, I, I just don't know that I could put myself out there like that. And incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you know, you're talking about your reaction to all of that. I, I enjoyed watching the people go up and write on it because it was very profound for them. Uh, clearly, you know, we were only here for a portion of the two hours, but uh, you should feel really good about that. <laughs> yes. And they need more couples, more compliments. Oh, great. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> And others, yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, one of the things that struck me is for, as witnessing the performance and participating in it, and, and also participating in the conversations that were happening in the back of the room, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the, the whispers that were going on. Yeah, I couldn't hear any of that. All, yeah. I, all I heard was music so, and my thoughts and right. tears. But, there was, but, but that was all, for, for us as the viewer, that was part of the experience, was, yeah. was the conversations that we were having between each other. And just, just this, the, you walked into the room and there was this, this reverence that you felt you needed to respect. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't walk in and go, hey girl, how you doing? You all of a sudden, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And Karen and I were talking and she, she said, you know, about your vulnerability. And I said, in my opinion, I said, well, actually, no. You actually set yourself up to be loved. You put yourself in a safe space, your gallery, and you invited your friends. And, and it was a lot different than if you set yourself up on the street corner and had 
complete strangers passing by in a, in a totally unprotected space. But that said, it was because you set yourself up to be loved, it was that healing experience, you know, of, of people that came in and said, hey, this, this guy means something. Respect it. You know. And yeah. it was it was moving. It was really moving. But it was not for me it wasn't that vulnerability. It was more the invitation of of allowing each of us to express our own feelings towards you. Aww. <laughs> So I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to do um, uh, an installation piece uh, probably in the next month or two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take a little step back from trying to do some more scribbles or some painting or anything now and uh, just really explore the feelings tonight that I know I'm still like too like wrapped up in to really unwind and see what and where it's gonna go. Uh, but it's definitely gonna be an installation piece and you can come back and see it here. <laughs> Just saying. And but yeah, I'm not sure, it's gonna be an installation piece. Mm -hmm. The people that wrote on there mm -hmm. can come back? That's gonna be cool. I think so. But who am I? Yes. <laughs> can you talk about the wire? So you talked about your scribbles. Uh -huh. Um, so, uh, the, the pieces with the wire are sort of the expression for how we trap ourselves in our mind in these little, little boxes, these little areas. We, we don't, we don't really venture outside of that area once we're in it. We're in it and that's it. And then sometimes we get trapped and we get lost within it. Um, so I really wanted to sort of capture, um, the idea of our mind and how we can like um, in this piece specifically there there's only a couple ways you can make it through this entire thing where you find freedom all the way from top to bottom and uh, it's an it's an intentional thing so you we all think that there is the one way and there is the one way and that's your way whatever way that manifests itself um, to you you may have ten ways but what it shows is your way. Um, so I, I really wanted to capture the idea of just uh, traveling through your mind and knowing that there's freedom on the other side of wherever you're trapped in your mind now. It's only a temporary place. It's like a purgatory, so to speak. So. And I like teal, so. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, yeah. Is that about it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm also a, a little dork. Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. I do want to know more about this piece. This one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this um, is like the... So this is a shadow of my hand, by my hand, take it from a few different photos of my arm and my hand. Um, and so, 
probably none of you will ever see me paint. Um, but if you see me paint, I listen to music incredibly loudly on my headphones, and I dance around and look like a fool. Robert has heard much of it in his time when we lived above him. Super cool. <laughs> right? You can just feel the creativity. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Exactly. It's great. You're welcome. It was inspiring to me. All those years later, here we are. Um, but so I, I happen to do this moment with my hand that to me is like me releasing energy. So I wanted to release energy, but this pose when you see it in this way is this control. It's like um, the with the marionettes and how you can see that. It's how we can put each other on this. We can control each other simply just by doing this and just pulling a string and here we are. We are at wherever we are in our life, whatever it is, simply because somebody does that. Um, so, yeah, it's just more, yeah, I don't really know if I can describe it better than that. I don't know, it's more of a feeling um, and this sense of manipulation in my head when I was doing it more than I think that it may be now or I could say now. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't sat with it long enough to really explore that. And I mean, the work will, this work will still take on new meaning for me in three months, six months, and a year from now. So um, I think my work changes me and I change my work from that conversation. So. <sighs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about how you dance with the music. Uh huh. That's, I am one of those people. Uh huh. But you talk about how important the process is to you rather than the, the planned outcome. How that changes. How the process is cathartic to you in some way. Um. <laughs> Was there a question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that art for anybody who makes art is a, is a very cathartic experience. Um, and I don't know if I could speak on it more than anyone else could. Um, the, the music shapes me. Music has a lot to do with who I am as a person. I have, I have grown quite a bit from music um, when I was... 16, um, prior to that I listened to like stupid pop garbage that's on the radio, um, and uh, then I was introduced to, uh, and I'm sure I'll get a gasp or something, but like Fish and The Grateful Dead, and from that, um, from that music I, I realized things aren't so coated in sugar, we're not just we can't live by this garbage in our ear. Uh, like, it, it, it let me know that we need to be more connected. Um, and so through the music that I listen to now, um, which is generally depressing, depending on your mood, um, <laughs> but I find that healing. So I, I, I become happy and joyous in that. So I... I and I listen to angry, like heavy metal, and I and I become very vulnerable and weepy. So I mean, I don't know. It just it's music. It just it has to be a part of my process. Or I don't think if if I didn't listen to music, I don't think I could create at all, honestly. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that really answers your question, but something else came out of it, so there's that. <laughs> Sorry. And I have to tell you, I listen to depressing music too, and it doesn't depress me. Yeah, yeah. it just somehow it, yeah. it, it takes on a new form. Yeah, it does. All right, what do you guys consider depressing music? Yeah, Cowboy Junkies. Oh, oh I love that. Trinity oh. Sessions. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Sounds like I know, a date. It basically it just removes that sense of isolation and that experience that you're having. Right. I mean, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Of course you do. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing it with me. 
Oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I see something chatting and I'm like, hi. <laughs> yes. How do you plan to make less comments with the performance? Final comment. <laughs> Just. <laughs> more questions. Yeah, so. just, just not, not in this public. format. Yeah. So with another beer. With another beer. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing show. Amazing performance.